Hello guys, I'm Fizzy. And I'm Wycoms. <laughs> and welcome back to another race, uh, Fizz... Oh, fuck. Another race, Fizz? Um, what? <laughs> and welcome back to another Fizz Chris highlights from the AOR PC Split 1 and League of Season 13. We are at round 6 for this season at Canada. Fuck. Oops. <laughs> Well, to be honest, yeah. I mean, that track, technically, well, just looking at it, it's a pretty good track, but just for league racing on F1 games, it's maybe not as, you know, <laughs> doesn't have maybe the best uh, reputation for league racing on F1 games, but we will see how it goes, I guess. Yeah, we will. I mean, Canada is a track where I love watching races, but personally, I'm not a big fan of driving it, but of course, we'll just see how it goes. So here we are then at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve here in Montreal as you're actually losing the back end here out of the final corner because you're already Good start. <laughs> Good start to the lap as we're now approaching turn one or actually two if I think it's technically losing a lot of copy for me on the inside and uh, out of uh, turn three here we go pretty tricky practice on out of uh, there coming into this first tricky chicane easy to cut an extent but we managed uh, to go through there pretty nicely and uh, I think I'm ahead at the end of the first sector. Yes, you are indeed. I noticed you get got a lot better traction out of the second corner compared to me uh, short shifting, <laughs> using the short shifting technique a bit better. You got a bit of overstay though out of that particular corner. Now we go doing some slipstream off the Renault of Papa Socrates, so is a man sitting P1 in the session, session at, the, at the moment. And both of us navigating that chicane nicely without any uh, of uh, track excursions either. A bit of overstay from me that time and now heading into the hairpin. Yeah, very, very crucial track to turn here once again because it's going to be on the longer straight of the circuit and I gained a little bit more time there and you're using a little bit more track on the exit there and there's now on a lot of time to think here through this uh, <laughs> during this straight for the final chicane which is obviously very very tricky breaking at the 100 meter board going over the curves you're very very cautious you're losing a little bit of more time to me there and in the end you can see I will be 6 tenths out of a 111.9 you are on a 112.5 Yep, I hate that final chicane, so uh, let's pretend that doesn't exist, and let's <laughs> look at the results. You are P2, and again, you are so close to BM pole, but you didn't get it. Nine thousands off. I was only P12, despite only being six tenths of a second off you, which is actually that much, but yeah, really, really close qualifying here. At least, though, my lap time was actually a second better than whatever I did last season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, time-wise, definitely your uh, your lap wasn't uh, definitely definitely not too bad, and you also will have. Um, oh no, you actually won't have uh, the yep. opportunity to start on first pass because Shit. <laughs> we are back <laughs> not to again. normal. We're not back to normal conditions in this league because that's what we like, do we? <clears throat> uh, yeah, sure. It's always fine. <laughs> yeah, rain. <laughs> it's wet. It's wet, and I don't like wet. So. Um, as usual, we have not done too much wet practice either, because we no. always go into this very naively, thinking, oh, it's going to be dry this time, we've had so much wet weather this season, surely now it's going to be dry, but no. Yeah, and especially <laughs> on a track which is so dependent on traction, it's probably going to be very, very tricky in these opening laps. And I should mention that I actually disconnected uh, at the end of qualifying, so it might be the case that I will get a lag start here as well, so we have to watch out for that as well. Ah oh, yeah, that's always a uh, dangerous thing, and you never know whether you get, you know, the lights going out before everyone else or after everyone else, so I think uh, that's why I told everyone else in the Discord chat to be careful behind you, just in case you did get like that, don't want you to be hit in the back and get disqualified or something like that. Oh my god. So uh, <laughs> that would be the worst case scenario, scenario but at least, oh my god, Papa Socrates have already gone off pole position before every lights has gone out, and it looks like you have a... Uh, had a pretty not laggy start actually, pretty decent there. Slightly ahead of everyone, I think, but yeah. not too much. And you can see the field is coming into the first corner, trying to keep it clean here. Oh, the last thing you want to do is lose a piece of your front wing, and so far so good for everyone. It seems no contact in the field. As uh, I see that you have also kind of dropped back into the field a little bit to give back any potential time that you might have gained from going up. But yeah, Papa's a from Paul just absolutely jumped it. Surely that's going to be a drive through for him. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've never seen. I would have never seen a lag start like this, really. So uh, uh, that's probably gonna be him in, at the in the pits at the end of lap one. As Fukutaro and Slick go side by side a little bit, maybe a flag contact there actually. So you know, have a look at Slick there. But yeah, especially this opening laps is really the target to get the hang out of it and not lock up into these chicanes here. It's probably pretty easy to run <laughs> wide here. Fukutaro actually managing to just stay on the track here to defend from. 
Snick there around the outside. You have that better traction out of that chicane. And now around the outside into the head. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Well, we will see as uh, I'm going around the outside, trying to get a traction now in first gear. Always tricky out of this happen in these conditions. And unfortunately, Slick has just managed to get a bit more speed through there uh, with a better line through the corner. And now we can see that Papa Sucker is, is indeed going in to serve. He's a drive through. He was just blasting away from everyone, just trying to minimize his time loss, I guess. But he's going to drop now way down the field, which obviously is the same for him from pole position. Uh, so Fab Racer up to second behind you, he's going to set the fastest lap of the race also on the first lap, so he's going to be pressuring you quite a bit now. Speaking of pressure though, I've got a car nearly on my inside. It says that Papa Socrates in P12 actually, I've got RBK behind me on the track though, but Socrates is come, going to come out of the pits. Basically next to me, they're just behind actually, splitting me and RBK, who is a new driver in the league, is worth pointing out as well, on his debut race. As now we are at the end of lap 2. And you are missing oh, no. the breaking point there, Chris! Oh, with the Wall of Champions! And there goes Fab Racer. Oh dear. Uh, luckily, no <laughs> damage, I think. Oh my god, you actually... Oh, I've done the me. same thing! <laughs> oh my god, I'm probably going to lose the, another uh, position as well to stuff, so at least you didn't get a warning. I got a warning there for going clumsy over that car, because otherwise it would have been definitely a front wing loss. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately I lost the lead, and maybe not that unfortunate because it seems like we are actually pulling a gap Fab Racer and me at the moment, so maybe it's not bad to have like a car ahead of me, if you might actually have a little bit more experience in the weather, in practice, I don't know. Uh, it seems like yeah, she is. No! Like Whoa! That's Slake. That's Slake. They're sitting, and this, this happened is probably yeah, one of the most trickiest braking zones on this circuit, especially in the rain, so we might see some more of there as well, as we now skip to lap 4 again, same spot. And that is a Ferrari, that's making us a championship leader actually Ooh. out. Well, not out, but, you know, dropping many, many positions. He didn't do well too well in qualifying either, so that's a, uh, not good for him, to say the least. Yeah, crucial for the championship there, Nick B. It's not uh, usual we've seen those kind of mistakes from him this season, but yeah, another one has been caught out at the heaven in the wet conditions. As, oh, Fugataro's been caught out as you can have again run wide, actually, that's a warning for me that time. And Fugataro, though, has lost a lot more time from going across the hole, taking the Sch Rosberg line across the final chicane. I might have a chance, although I, oh, I thought he was going to move over on me there, so I backed out of it. Because there uh, wasn't too much space. At least I managed to defend from RBK, who again had the nose off my inside. Can I nail the traction, though? It doesn't really look like it, because I was oversteering all over the place. But luckily, still keeping my car ahead just about. So I'm really kind of... I'm under a lot of pressure in this uh, midfield, really, uh, just holding on to the top 10 oh. at the moment. And Fugitaro again is just drifting off the track at the first corner, rejoining. Can I take advantage of this? Let's have a look. I'm trying to get on the track as much as I can to get up the inside into the chicane. And surely, if we can hit the apex, there we go. I've got to the position of Fugitaro finally to go up to P9. So I'm getting three positions from where I started. Um, it's alright, into the points at least, you know, at the track like Montreal, which I don't really like, I just want to score some points, and uh, looks like you're struggling a little bit to keep on uh, with the back of Fab as well. Yeah, and then a little, bit, a little bit of a mistake, locking up slightly and going straight on into internet GK, not to applying any throttle, otherwise I would have got another warning. I uh, lost a little bit of time in that sector as well, so uh, nothing gained there. But yeah, it seems like that Fab and me, and especially Fab, is pulling a gap towards the rest of the field, it seems like. And now we're making actually a big jump onto lap 16, because just literally nothing happened. And now, actually, we can see some cars being lapped. That's actually Nick B, for some <laughs> reason. That's uh, not the sight I thought I would see. Yeah, getting lapped, and he seems to be very, very slow. I wonder if... I'm gonna see it in a moment, I guess, but, uh, and he is actually on soft tires. Oh. That's, Ooh. that's very interesting. Oh, it's Papa Socrates. Also, oh, that's unfortunate, actually, for Papa. He's also on the soft tire. Interesting. Very interesting. So we are, yeah, very interesting. We are obviously at the halfway point of the race. If uh, the rain was gonna last till the end, you'd expect maybe that people would pit for another set of injuries at this point, but obviously the weather forecast did say that it was, if, that it was gonna dry up actually quite early on in the race, but we're at the halfway point now, this rain is still coming down at least a bit, so it's wet out on track, but a few drivers have seemingly taken the gabble onto the slick tires, and it was quite clear there from uh, you going past Nick and Papa quite easily that it's not quite time for it yet. No, definitely not. You're still in P9, 5 seconds to the gap to Afro, but you definitely pull the gap to the cars behind. Uh, slick now the car behind you, so you're definitely showing uh, reasonable, pay, reasonable, reasonable pace once you had, uh, you know, clean air as there's another car on slick tires that's uh, chicane this time. 
who uh, think, yeah, of course, I mean, these tyres can't, you know, they will wear out, wear out and probably some people thought, okay, uh, probably could take the gamble once the tyres are dead. You can see you are on 52%, which is actually pretty good, to be honest, considering uh, it's said on the strategy that, that it will be e uh, definitely a one-stop for this yeah. race if it's not going to dry out. And that actually was a car coming out of the pits. It actually jumped a car in the pits now. That was fail failure on yeah. super softs. So, uh, more people taking the gamble here. Very interesting, yeah. So, as I said, as the tyres are wearing out, people are taking the gamble. Mathis as well now, a lap down as well. It seems like a lot of drivers are going for the slick tyres and it isn't working because you're going past so many of them who are being lapped. And obviously, I don't know, at this point, it's you, you kind of want to, since you think the track is going to dry up, so you want to try and stretch these tyres until it's time, uh, you know, for the crossover point. As I'm now over the back of Ram, who was running very high up he was in third. Uh, battling he was for third, the podium. Yeah. yeah, he was third, and now he, after his pits, he is slower than me, while I am still on the worn intermediate. So, damn, it's a lot of drivers being caught out. And I think as long as this is the case, you know, I'm gonna just try and keep an eye on the gap to Ram now, really, and yeah. see when, uh, if at any point, he starts catching me on those slick tires, because that would give you an indication of whether it's time to switch over. But for now. It definitely is. No, definitely not. There was a lot of communication. Actually, Berg coming into the pits now as well. So there was a lot of commu communication going on between us two, uh, just to keep on, you know, see how these gaps develop towards these thing. And more people in the pits. No, you're jumping, Nuka, and Sasso will come out ahead of you. So uh, let's see. We will have more comparisons coming up in the next few laps. Yeah. And obviously, these tires won't go to the end for both of us. So we will definitely have to pit. And it's going to be crucial what we were gonna at the moment we're definitely doing the right call here at staying out at Safso at the second chick hey you know my god he's losing oh. the car as well <laughs> almost into the wall and I saved him from him but you're giving in another position you're now up to be five um, already yeah I did definitely oh my god I just noticed Fab has been pitting as well you're into the lead now so Fab has gone into the pit lane let's see what tires he's gone on the ultra soft oh dear. with with 13, 13 laps to go Oh my word, that's, are they even going to last that long? That's a double gamble there for Fab Racer. Yeah. First going on dry toss and then on the ultra soft as well. We're definitely not that too durable. So it, uh, he might even fear a puncture towards the end of the race if, he if he's not careful enough with lockups and you know. So let's see, you're actually, you're actually about P4, to lap to uh, P3. Come and hit the car stall. Uh, that was actually <laughs> Afro in the pits now? Yeah. It looks like everyone, apart from us two and Slick at least, have gone into the pits because I'm go I've gone up to P3 from P9 where I was before everyone started yes. taking gambles, so uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. it's ridiculous. And obviously with all these people pitting and you know uh, being around us on track, it will help us. Okay, that won't help us. Uh. Uh, <laughs> that will not help us. That's my front left template gone. Uh, from Mathis, who was left on. I was a bit confused as to what side he was taking Watch there because he was on the racing line and last minute moved over. But yeah. if you had a look at the gap to Fabrice, it was 14 seconds, so we definitely have to wa watch an eye uh, look at this gap on the next lap. It's increased to six uh, or to 20 seconds. I get six laps, uh, six seconds in one single lap, and that is just confirmation. It is not ready yet for these ultra stuff. The track is definitely drying up, but it's just so it's slow of a process, it's ridiculous almost. It's, it's ridiculous, it's Suzuka season 12 all over again, obviously you weren't in that race, but to those who watched my split one race from Suzuka last season, that was another case of the track, you know, according to the forecast, was going to dry out earlier in the race, but it just took absolute ages for the crossover point to come, and uh, it seems to be a similar story here to that, it's just everyone getting caught out by how long the water is staying on the track here obviously the sun hasn't come out to help the drying up process that you're now actually going to come into the pits because yeah. you have extended that gap to fab so i guess Ex i think we both agreed in the voice chat that you know it, was like, it, it wasn't even a gamble for you anymore to go on the slicks now no. because even if it's not time yet you, you, you know fab is going to have the same struggles and you did have the gap to not come out into the lead i have t i have pulled 10 seconds in two laps here on fab racer and I think he got some damage as well from some mistake, I don't even know. But I'm definitely going to maintain the lead here. And you're actually under pressure now from RBK once again, who is one of these mans who still are on their first set of intermediates. 
So, and with only 10 laps to go, obviously you can't go to the end. We saw your tire wear, uh, well, there as well, I think it's over 60% now. Yeah, 66%. So you will have to pit in the next couple of laps as well. And with the damage as well, it's not going to help you either. But RBK now up the inside and the rookie doing a very, very good impression of himself. Here, moving up into a podium position with only 10 laps to go. Yeah, I was uh, starting to struggle a bit after that damage, to be honest. It's, uh, it was a little bit more annoying to get the car turned in, as if the tire wear wasn't making it annoying enough. But obviously RBK having the same issues with the fact that he's also on the interest that he started on and taking the same strategy route as what we are doing. As now, actually, that is fab, nearly dropped into wow. my pace all of a sudden. So RBK has already gone past him, actually. RBK was pulling away from me quite uh, clearly after my damage and, uh, yeah. Fab still on the Ultrasoft and still, despite me being 74% on the rares, I'm actually kind of catching him a bit, but yeah, this is puncture territory, it's going to be risky to stay out any longer than this, so with the, well, seven laps to go, I'm going to go in, am I going to go on the Inters though, or will I go on the Super Ultrasoft, that remains to be seen. It's going to be interesting to see. I'll definitely have a huge gap to RBK, but I don't know, it's probably about 13 seconds or something, 14 seconds. And going on to the Ultrasofts as well. It's going to be crucial where you are coming out. So, let's see. Slick is not there, so you will remain P4, which that yeah. is brilliant, to be honest. That is very, very good for you, and you don't have any penalties so far. So, obviously, you have to defend from Slick here because he's, you know, you, do, you didn't take the front wing change. So yep. that's going to be interesting as well. And yeah, gap. Oh my god, that's a little bit deep there. <laughs> but uh, gap to, for me is to RBK. 14 seconds, that should be well and truly that's enough to mess it up. That's ridiculous, yeah. I just don't do anything too uh, crazy with the, the walls and the wall of champions, <laughs> preferably. But uh, we'll see, yeah, the, the gap is crazy. And we are now on the final lap, obviously, because nothing really happened to us. We were just managing the gap. And obviously, strategy, strategic decision for me, like you pointed out, that I didn't change my front wing, because if I had changed my front wing, I would have fallen behind Slick and probably a few other cars on my pit stop, but uh, uh, just managing that for us. Um, you only have that world champion to avoid, and you have done it, Chris. You are going to win the Canadian Grand Prix. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Very weird conditions, really. So, so weird. I was not thinking of anything, really, than the win. And then once Fab just pitted and lost so much time, I was like, okay, this is mine to lose or mine to win, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, strategy was. <gasps> oh, that's Fab Racer! Speed what is this? The devil himself. Puncture. Puncture in the last lap or run out of fuel. I don't even know. That's... I don't even care. Because uh, that's going to mean that I'm up to P3. Out of nowhere, so yeah, puncture for Fab, kind of heartbreaking for him, but you know, that's what you do with the gamble, 13 laps on Ultrasoft, so I'm gonna weave, be very happy as well, and I've what? been promoted to P2, according to the thing there, so RBK had 15 seconds worth of penalties, How? so he finished like 6 seconds ahead of me or something, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that, and Chris, what does this mean? We're gonna get a 1-2 at Canada? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What? How is it impossible? I mean, we, 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 we crossed the line. I mean, surely, you were in ninth on lap 18? 19? Yeah, something and, like that, yeah. And I was, like, second with, I don't know, well, I was definitely close to Fab, but then, then, and then just everything kicked off. Everyone pitted too early or didn't have the tire where to go any longer, and we just made the right choice here. And Impressive as well from RBK not to pit at all. That's ridiculous. Yeah. He must have had fantastic tyre wear, but obviously those penalties putting him behind me, so that's all that matters. And in the championship, as a result of this craziness, you're going to go up to P2 past Berg, who had a relatively poor race, and obviously closing the gap massively on Nick as well, who didn't even score a point, I think. No. So, uh, as for me though, I'm gonna finally move myself a bit away from that very uncomfortably close midfield <laughs> group that uh, was like four people on the same points last week, but I'm gonna go up to seven with a bit of a gap now. And in the constructors, <laughs> we were fourth lap. before. <laughs> I was not expecting actually that. So someone pointed out in the race thread after that, man, they're leading by two <laughs> points in the constructors. I was like, Wait what? a minute, how is that possible? <laughs> well, of course, Ferrari didn't score any points today, yeah. so that explains it, really. We got four, uh, we got 43, so, I mean, I'm not sure what happened in this race. I'm not sure how we no. got that 1-2, but we just played it safe. We just did everything right we could, and that was the key today. It doesn't 
freaking matter how we got the one two. All that matters is how we did. <laughs> and obviously, it was it was a bit of a you know strategic masterclass. Yeah. I guess we can say in terms of just reading the conditions and obviously reading uh, what everyone else was doing and uh, reacting to that as well. And obviously, I think our communication really helped each other as well. Yeah, definitely. So next track. Gonna be Austria. Austria, uh, definitely a yeah. good track. We, I think we both like that one, to be honest. And uh, hopefully without rain. Yeah, hopefully without <laughs> rain. And hopefully we haven't used up our good result now at mm. Montreal, which we didn't really like to go into the track that we do like at Austria. But fingers crossed it's gonna be a good race. I think we're gonna round it off there. Crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff at Canada. One, two for Manor. One, two for the Fist. Chris, underdog squad. So we're gonna. We're going to take a breather and we'll see you again in Austria. Bye-bye.